Uh, I think it's time for new releases. Yeah. Mm. You and I have been playing one of them. Do we want to talk about that one first? Sure. Uh, sure. Are, you, are you okay? You, you go first. Because like I have out. to write something down before I forget. Okay. I, we could talk about Disintegration. Mm-hmm. Which is a new game. Uh, who made it? Why am I blanking on who? The Private Division. Uh, from one of the co-creators of Halo. Mm -hmm. It is a first-person shooter with some real-time strategy elements to it. You are the pilot of this rocket sled thing. That's how I would describe it. It's a rocket sled thing. You you ride drive it with a first-person perspective. You can go up and down, which is sort of interesting. And it's the movement's a little gets a little takes a little getting used to because everyone else in your squad is running and you're supposed to be on this rocket sled so it's a little bit of an adjustment because you're the only person that's essentially flying and no one else is um and it's okay i really wanted to like it i saw the trailer for it and it looked really cool i even said something on twitter and they were excited that i was excited for their game and they provided a code not just to me, but also one that I was able to give to Cheapy. And I wanted to like it a lot more, but there's just a couple of little things about it. You know, it's visually, it's not incredible. It, it's fine. I, it looks good. It's just, you can't choose, your squad mates change each level, but you can't pick your squad mates each level. They're pre, it's all preset. And the weapons on your rocket sled are also sort of are also preset between each level. So you get to use a variety of weapons, but you can't choose to go in with like, oh, in this round I want to go in with my sniper rifle and my healing ray. It's like, nope, this round you're using your uh, nine millimeter and your whatever and your grenades, and that's what you get, and that's it. Because it's it's almost set up. I mean, I played very little, so I'm, I probably shouldn't say anything, but it seems like it's set up like you're solving. Instead of just shooting things, like it's like a puzzle you're solving. I need to, you need to use this vehicle and these troops to get. But it's past almost this. a. It's for me, it's a little too rigid. I think that way. I hear like you. maybe if it was a little more open, it might be a little bit better. And it's not that it's bad. I'm not like it's not a broken game. It's not that it's no fun. I've played a good amount. Um, I would say I'm more than halfway through, probably very close to the end. I just, I don't know. I just kind of wish it was a little bit more. A little bit more variety, a little bit more choice, level, a little better leveling up options. Because I think they did a really good job with, you know, the character designs are really cool. Everyone is a robot whose thoughts and emotions were implanted in them from humans. And, but the robots all look really cool. So, that, you know, there's some really interesting things going on. I wish there was a way to see a third person view of you in the scooter. Like if you could switch from first person to third person, because you kind of lose the sense that you're driving a flying motorcycle when you've never get to see the flying motorcycle. Yep. Could so, be anything. Yeah, exactly. You could be anything that's just kind of like floating there. And I get why they did it that way. They want you to be able to see that sort of wide view of the map because it has those strategy elements where you're directing your troops where to go. So in that sense, it makes a lot of sense. But when you're not doing that, it would be nice to be able to zoom yourself out to kind of get the feel that I'm on this cool motorbike and that kind of a thing. Word. Word. Wombat, you have so many tips, and we don't have ship, and I have zero tips. Well. That's, that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was about to make a moil joke. But I don't know who would I, get it. I'm guessing that's either how it goes or GP has screwed screwed something up. No, no, it. no. No, I don't. I look, I screwed up with one thing and I fixed it. It's now it's perfectly functioning. Yeah. System here. Wom sure. Wombat's the man of the people. Yes. That's me playing uh, Disintegration. Yeah. <laughs> That's what all the people are playing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else we got here? The new releases. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mortal Kombat Aftermath is, on, is under new releases. Has that been out for a while now? This is Aftermath Collection. It's a physical release, I believe. Oh, release of it got it, got it. Because because uh, we finally all, now we all have that. I know GP's had it for a while. 
But uh, I got to play some RoboCop, and that was kind of cool. And I played the uh, the other guy with the white hair who does wind stuff. I don't know his name. He does some cool stuff. I like him, too. <laughs> Gassy. Gassy man. So, yeah, that's cool. I need to play that story, but I have so much going on. I just haven't had, I haven't gotten to it yet. We should just battle each other online. I'll I take would Robocop be happy to. and you can take whoever you want. Yeah. Yep. What else? Uh, um, what else? Uh, Desperados 3 came out. I know we saw that at E3 last year, Cheapy. Oh, yeah. That's that, uh, it's a strategy game where you're in the old west and you play as the eagles no um no no you don't <laughs> um <laughs> is it about coming to your senses no do you no, ride it's... fences no <laughs> shouldn't you be boycotting them or something i don't know i maybe I, I feel like you probably have reasons to boycott them the, the um, eagles yes i'm sure there's a reason well, out Glenn there for fry's boycott. dead so the i can't eagles. boycott okay. a dead man I, that seems like the easiest boy cap possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought that was that looked cool at E three last year. Yeah, I, I it, it seemed pretty far along. So, um, it's the one where you would like throw your coin to distract people and then go and shoot them shoot with them. your yeah, you go shoot them. Um, so that, I mean. It's right at E3 week. You can, you can also, speaking of Old West games, you can play Sunset Riders on Arcade Archives. Fantastic, then. Yep. That's a good game. You can play some Sunset Riders. Anything uh, else? Not really. Right. I got a code for um, a game. Actually, I think it came out. Uh, when did it come out? May 27th. What date okay. is it now? <laughs> <laughs> it is june 11th june 11th so it came out a couple of weeks ago but i got a code for missile command recharged and i know that we're all old so and we know what missile command is i played this game as well so. oh you have okay yeah i played it on uh iphone it came out first on iphone it seems like yeah it's an iphone i was this i mean it's it's cool for what it is which is just like a minimalist version of missile command but you know i mean missile command's pretty minimalist already but updated i guess like it reminds me of um it was like those music puzzle games, that that type of visual. But it's a very simple game. Like there's no, it's like a three dollar game. It's Missile Command. Yeah, yeah, and it's three dollars. So you, I wanted, I was expect, I wanted more. Like I wanted the Pong Quest. I wanted oh, to be no, at this, least this as much stuff. Much, yeah, this is very much a hey, we made Missile Command, but we made it like Geometry Wars. Uh, Geometry graphics. Wars. Thank you. That's yeah, it, and it, it's good. I yes. I think it was free on iPhone, I believe. Or maybe it was part of Apple Arcade. I don't remember. I yeah. don't remember paying for this game on iPhone and, and I remembered enjoying it enough and going, Yep, that was that was Missile Command. I wanted there to be like a fifteen dollar version of that, you know, sure. where there's just there's more, maybe some like cool sound uh, song missile, and stuff. Missile Command there's not a whole lot to I don't know if you know this. <laughs> I do. I'm there's aware. not a whole lot to Missile Command. Especially once you take away the trackball. Uh, well, I mean, I grew up primarily playing the Atari 2600 version. Oh, so you haven't experienced your hand getting stuck underneath the trackball when you do this? No, it's more of a just hoping the Atari 2600 controller <laughs> gets you in the right vicinity. <laughs> right. Uh, I liked it. I liked it on the 2600. Oh yeah, it was great. Yeah. It freaked me out. Uh, I think I've told this story before, but we're 600 something episodes in here. Anytime that you died in the Atari 2600 version of Missile Command the entire screen just started like flashing on and off and it made this big, like booming sound. Like and a Japanese every, cartoon in the nineties. Yeah. Every, every time that happened, I ran out of the room that I did not want to see that. Wow. That like upset me when that happened. Right. Right. It was a nuclear Holocaust. Right. Um, it made it also, I was upset cause I just lost a missile command. Right. It but, was the kid who would be king of its time. It was, <laughs> I don't know how missile command got away those graphics, that man. That's why. So real. Um, yeah, it just made me want more missile command. I feel like they should get, um, you know, the uh, the Res guys to make. You know, Res made Tetris. They made the Tetris effect. They should make missile command something that, with dance. To music. be fair, this is one of the best things Atari's done in a while. 
like they're on a little bit of a streak here with missile command recharged and pong quest right don't worry the hotels are coming <laughs> maybe they're gonna be great if they're based upon these right i'm wearing an atari t-shirt it's gotta count for something it doesn't <laughs>